friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're going to be talking about Epipremnum pinnatum, these bad boys. So Epipremnum pinnatum are somewhat related to Epipremnum aurum, which you might know better as like golden poffos, devil's ivy, all of those ones. They're related to these, <laughs> but they're different. They're still different. One's a pinnatum. This one's a pinnatum. I find the main difference to be in the shape of the leaf in these pinnatums. The leaf is a lot like longer and skinnier, more like an oval shape. Whereas in the orums, it's more of like a heart shape, like a lot rounder, a lot less long and skinny like this. And so that's like the main difference from like looking at it. Otherwise, their care is pretty similar. These are pretty easy, low maintenance plants. They're pretty chill and it's great. I love a chill plant. You can allow these to trail, kind of like this one is. I mean, it's not very big, so I wouldn't call it trailing quite yet. Or you can give these something to climb. They will really thank you for that because climbing is the only way they can reach their mature form. And when they mature enough, they can get splits in their leaves, kind of like how monsters have splits in their leaves or like Adansonii. But these can grow splits too, but only if you let them get to their mature form which indoors is a lot less common. So here I have an Epipremnum pinnatum green form, and here I have an Epipremnum pinnatum blue form, also known as a Cebu blue pothos. Really quick, before we get into the care of these bad boys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Right, let's get into it. Epipremnum pinnatum are fairly drought tolerant plants. They're not too, too picky when it comes to watering. I water mine when their soil is like 75 to 100% dry. But right now in summer, I am watering this one probably every 14 days, but that's because it's in moss moss and perlite so it holds water a little bit more and then this one my green form i am watering about every six days and it's in soil so you will probably water them fairly regularly in the summer and then in the autumn and winter you are going to reduce the watering quite a lot they're not going to need as much because one they go a bit dormant not totally they will still grow but the growth can slow quite a lot or even stop in some cases if it's not getting like ideal conditions so don't worry if that happens it's totally normal but you want to be slowing down your watering in the autumn and winter to not nearly as often you can also tell they need water because their leaves might droop like epipremnum aurum their leaves can wilt and droop that is a sign that they're thirsty you could wait for that to happen before you water them but they're not going to like it as much as you paying attention to the soil. When you do water, you want to thoroughly soak the soil. You want to really let the soil soak up all that good water and let the roots have it. They really like that. But you don't want to let it sit in like a puddle of water for a long time because that could cause root rot and even the death of your plant. So don't let it sit in water. They are also not super picky when it comes to light. Great. Ideally, obviously, they're going to want bright indirect light that is going to help them grow the best, the fastest, the biggest leaves, but you can adapt them to lower light as well, like maybe medium, maybe on the high end of the low spectrum. They won't hate you for it, they'll just grow a little bit slower. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to avoid direct sun though, as that will burn their leaves and make them not as happy, so avoid direct sun. I personally have both of these in my Ikea cabinet, which is about four and a half meters from the southwest facing window in that room, but I have them under grow lights for at least seven hours a day. On days where it's gray, I will turn them on all day just to make sure my plants are getting enough light in there because it can get quite dark. But you still want to make sure that they are getting a rest period at night. You're not just blasting them with light all the time because they do need their like sleep just like we need our sleep. Pinatums are fairly flexible when it comes to temperature. Their ideal is between 16 and 32 degrees Celsius, which is like 60 to 90 Fahrenheit. They can tolerate quite a wide range of temperatures, which is 
great. So really your home should be fine. I wouldn't worry too much. If you're comfortable in your home, they will be comfortable in your home. The one thing to avoid though is drafts, both hot and cold. So keep them away from like drafty windows, air vents, air con, heaters, radiators, that kind of thing. So avoid drafts. Pinatums prefer higher humidities, but they can tolerate lower as well. So your home would probably be fine, but if you could supplement it as well, they're gonna thank you for it. They will grow better. I personally have mine in my IKEA cabinet, which the humidity in there is usually between 60 and 75%. So on the higher side for sure, most houses aren't that just on their own. And I do have a humidifier in there, but I don't always turn it on. So the humidity in there just tends to be higher than in my flat generally. In order to boost humidity, you can put them on a pebble tray. You can group them with other plants because that will naturally boost the humidity in the space. Or you can get a humidifier, which in my opinion is probably the easiest because then you can actually like control it with a button. Pinatums tend to be fairly easy growers and they'll grow quite quickly even without much fertilizer, which is awesome. They're just one of like those easy plants that just does it without too much intervention from you, which is great. I personally fertilize them about once a month in the spring and summer, and I will do so with half strength liquid gold leaf fertilizer. I do half strength just because I don't want to burn the plant by having too much fertilizer. And then I will stop fertilizing in autumn and winter and give them a break because they're not gonna be growing as much, so they don't need the fertilizer. Well, draining soil is ideal. To boost the drainage in your soil, you can add perlite or orchid bark, and that will give the soil a little bit more drainage, which is awesome, they're gonna love it. I do keep this one directly in just moss and perlite. I don't know if that's ideal for this one. Um, I think I'm actually thinking about repotting it in some soil at this point, but I don't know, it's, it's growing really well, so I don't know if I should, like, maybe it'll grow better if I give it better soil. Things to think about. But no matter what you do, you want to make sure you're giving it a pot with drainage holes. As you can see, mine has some roots coming out of its drainage holes. So maybe it is time. Maybe I will repot you. Maybe I'll pot you in soil. Anyway, it's happy, so that's what matters. Propagation of panatums is super easy. Like other pothos, all you really need is a stem cutting with a node. Having a node is super important because if you don't have a node, it's not gonna grow roots and it's gonna die. So make sure you get a cutting with a node. But basically all you need to do is get your cutting with a node and put it in your medium of choice, whether it be water, moss, soil, whatever, and wait for it to root. If you're propping in anything other than soil, once it's got roots that are like five to 10 centimeters or one to two inches, then you can put it into soil and grow your plant from there. Easy as that. I personally propagated this one from a couple, like one or two leaf cuttings, and I did so in moss and perlite. It really liked that. This one took a little bit of time to root. I will put up here how long it took. I don't remember off the top of my head, but here it is. It's grown loads since I got it, which is the main thing, and it's really happy. My green form was also propagated. This came from cuttings from my friend who propagated it and then gave it to me. So I'm not really sure what she propagated it in, but it's been grown from propagation. So it's also really happy. Unfortunately, panatums are toxic to humans and pets. So do keep it out of reach of your pets and children. They're not gonna wanna eat this. Ingestion can cause swelling of like the mouth and throat and tongue and stuff. Very dangerous. So keep out of reach and donate your plants. So yeah, that is it. That is all you need to know about Epiphernum panatum plants. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Also, if you didn't know, I have a Patreon where you can get bonus content from me and we can all have fun and get to know each other better. So head over there if you want that kind of thing. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!